Hi, y'all. Uh, I'm Zylan Boozer, uh, artist named Fluffy Poochie One One. If you ever want to search me up, um, and I'm a 3D animation, also glass blower, and I'll be graduating CCD soon. And tell me about this 3D animation that you've been working on. So for your senior year of college, people normally have a senior thesis, uh, just one big final project. Um, and we have what we call a capstone, the same exact thing. You just work on something for a whole year. And so um, for my capstone, I'll be making a three, almost three minute short film about a robot um, who intakes human memories. Um, I found this idea while I was glass blowing. Um, I have images for that if you want that. Um, so the way he normally works is he has, he normally stores human memories. So if there's like a husband and a wife, the husband gets his memories recorded because he's about to die soon. And so he gets his memories recorded. And then after he dies, or sorry, he gets his memories recorded. He asks the robot to tell his wife uh, to send these specific memories to her. So after he dies, the robot then goes to the wife and shows those memories to her. Uh, the way it's set is that there is no more human life anymore, so the robot feels like he doesn't have any more purpose, and so he just looks at these memories, and he's like, what is mortality? Why are people dying? Why why are these memories so important? Um, and so the capstone is just for the robot's design. Um, uh, it's not that important to me to have, like, beautiful cinematic imagery it's not here to explain the grandma story it's just to show that i can 3d model i can do a little bit of 3d animation um but i'm doing i'm showing some sort of design through a story versus someone just talking about the design if that makes sense um, so that's the bulk of my capstone nice and when you have the short film completed will you be sending it to film festivals or posting on youtube for anybody oh yeah to... oh nice. yeah immediately i'm going to be showing the process i'll be showing i already made promo videos of um how the robot was made like how i designed his face and um or how i was like 3d modeling him and stuff uh so oh yeah i will be capitalizing as much as i can on this robot just because i enjoy his I, the idea of him uh so i just want i want to see what other people think about it yeah, it was the same way when when I was a, a senior at CCAD and we had to do the capstone in Joseph Kovacs class. I worked on my my film basically the whole the whole year. I may may spent the beginning of it working on the creature that was in the film, which that was a three and a half month process of building the character, and then of course drawing it because uh, did a poster version of it. Spent the entire semester working on the poster. Oh wow! <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so the way we we're going about it is all the pre-production is this first semester. So all the idea making, the writing, scripts, the thumbnails, what the character looks like, turnarounds, um, three D modeling it. Uh, that is all pre-production. So like one of our first things was to do the movie poster and to have a font picked out and a logo picked out for it so that's that's done for now now it's just making making him move that's always the struggle of it i know right yeah uh, i don't know if i can ask questions too but I'm, I'm curious uh what did you learn through that class or oh uh, what i what i learned in that class was time management yeah yeah, time management was was the big one. Uh, using all the time you have to work on the project because it is a big piece and it's a very in, important piece. Uh, but even now, doing the animation because production for for the film actually began in September. Uh, that wasn't part of the assignment. That was, I mean, the whole part of my assignment was just the creature and the poster. But the film itself, production didn't start until September of. 2023 last year and we have about i would say three no four thousand frames yeah so far with because it, it's a stop motion animation film 
to about oh. 4,000 frames so far. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Damn. And, uh, so much more to go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep yeah. going. You got this. Oh, yeah. Um, due to my calculations, there's going to be about 800,000 or 900,000 frames. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have like a team of people doing all that? Yeah, it's not a very big team. It's a small team, but we had the voice actors, of course, and uh, we have some some people doing the promotion. Mainly, it's all about promotion when the film gets gets finished. It's mainly about people promoting it, and of course, yeah. editors. Of course, that's the important part. But that's but it's basically three three animators, including my myself, is yeah. is doing the animation. But yeah, it's coming pretty good. And what was your inspiration to come up with this idea? So my inspiration, um, I kind of want to show you it because I already have it up. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Okay. Glass blower. Um, wow. I, I can do, I can use uh, the pipes and glass blow, but I also do a lot of uh, kiln casting, which you make a mold of something and then you put glass in it and it turns into whatever you mold it. Um, so That's awesome. I started off with um, the idea of like glass making a human head. Um, so this is it. This, this piece can stand alone by itself, but it goes into, um, something greater. This is the whole mold making process. Um, it goes from making a silicone mold to a wax, to a plaster, and then to glass. I made a couple of them. And this is me modeling with it. And then, uh, so the original idea, um, was that he looked like this <laughs> which did not execute well at all i redesigned him a lot <laughs> a lot um but he i wanted it to be for the people who are rich he is like mm -hmm. really really expensive to get you know like like freezing your body expensive when you're dead um and what I found important was people who are rich, sometimes they like to see the process of things. For example, a coffee maker. A coffee maker can be designed to look really slim and fit in a certain part of your house. And just it's super quick, super efficient, super easy. But some people who like really like coffee and the process of things, they'll have a really, really complicated coffee maker. And so this like this one little kebab can like hold something Well, this one burns under it and, and swirls around or whatever. Um, and so I really wanted to show the insides of this robot. Um, this is like his main, main uh, inspiration. So he has a really detailed torso. Um, and then he has a human face because he, uh, people wanted to connect with who's presenting the memories. He shoots the memories um, out of his eyes. He projects them. Um, and uh, they didn't want like some robot something that's so distant from a human to be giving them memories because it didn't feel like it was from the person that just died that it came from them if that makes any mm -hmm. sense it makes sense um, yeah so this robot is trying to project uh a memory uh even though he is dilapidated and has stuff growing out of him he is now replaying the memories um after the person's dead to himself after everyone's dead he's replaying them to himself because what else is there to do he's just mm -hmm. trying to understand life at that point um, but this is his original design um uh, and you know he like lost limbs he's been living for a really long time the speakers in his arms would play music or would play the audio of the memories um, so this is this is kind of what I'm going for. He has a really, really, he has an HDMI torso. Um, uh, you know, uh, HDMI, sorry. He has a hard drive torso. And I did like extensive research on that. The <laughs> olden, the older hard drive used to be about 10 and a half inches. So they could store just tons of stuff. But people are, are able to like, I have one in here, mm -hmm. able to compress it into something that's, you know, like five inches long, five inches in diameter. Um, but I wanted to show that this stores tons of memory. Like, there's a lot to consume. Um, and another fun feature with this torso is that a little laser shoots down um, and records or changes, you know, the storage in there. That's a new HDMI thing. Sorry, a new hard drive um, 
feature that's going to be updated is that lasers will like instantly cool and heat up a part of the disk to read information. A uh, little fun fact there. And so after a lot of redesign, um, he just, he evolved and was made into something like this. It's very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm still very open to critiques. Um, I like proportions and any of that, you know, it's, it's a still, still work in progress, but you know, it's, uh, I've never put as much thought into the design as I have other things. So to answer your question, um, he was like, the idea of him was originally made out of thin air. <laughs> I like, I was probably just sleeping on an idea and was just like, what if? this robot did this and so that's what I did um and I just uh, I just kept redesigning him multiple multiple times just to see that's what you know yeah yeah but that is that is the cortex rune five cortex or your brain cortex of it mm -hmm. and then rune to store information in five because that's just his version but yeah yeah I remember there were multiple designs with with the for the creature that I was making. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first okay. design that I came up with, it was basically just, uh, I mean, like the creature itself, I mean, you've probably seen it on my Instagram. It's basically just this six foot seven, six foot eight creature that is half reptile, has four tentacles on its back like an octopus. It, it's fine because the original idea, like the original drawing, it basically just looked like a man covered in moss with for robotic arms which i'm like that doesn't look that doesn't look scary gotta gotta make it gotta make it really terrifying and that's like yes. oh that's terrifying <laughs> Ooh, okay Ooh. Uh, even myself was afraid of the draw when i first did the final drawing i was actually more afraid of, of it yeah. than anything else so i had to embrace it <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 how did you keep ideating did you use anything did you talk to people what what made you have the final idea was it just drawing it 50 times over and over again it was that and also talking with people to see what frightens them the most because yeah. that's the whole point of the creature the creature is supposed to be really really scary yeah 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 mm. okay cool yeah and uh what what advice would you give to people that want to make short films or go into 3d animation talk to other people and don't stop um it, like always ask for critique because even if something is your baby it might not be best baby and so like look for people who are honest um specifically like go one-on-one -on -one. um a huge thing that my capstone class is failing on is that there's about 30 people in our class um and normally our classes are about eight people to 20 people depending on what it is um but this class is way too big and we present our ideas like big ones like this mm -hmm. for about two days straight and we only have five minutes to critique each other, which just is not enough time. Like people are not telling me what needs to be said about this. I, I want to know more. Um, I want to know what other people's ideas are, like what could make this look better, thought about better. So uh, talk to people. And then, I mean, people tell you to not treat it like your baby, even though it's hard to do that. But, you know, there's reason to not treat it like it's your baby. So, yeah. yeah. I had a project that was that was my baby when I came up when I was a senior in high school. Yeah, uh, it, it's funny because some people think Orlando Monsters my baby, but no, it actually isn't. It's it was basically just a horror film that I wrote to get get my name out there and get get my work out there. But uh, my my real baby was actually from when I was a senior in high school, and it took place in the nineteen eighties. Yeah, but then of course now dealing with building connections with other artists um i could finally pitch it to to some people it's actually a story that takes place in the 1980s and it imagine how to train your dragon but it was in the 1980s where it's that universe where it's humans and dragons interacting with each other but it took place in the 1980s wow interesting what inspired you was it how to train your dragon and... uh no i mean i'm 24 but I, I love the 80s, even though I yeah. never grew up in the 80s. I, I I love the 80s, mainly just the pop culture and everything and the products they had back then. Yes. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, eighties cars were really cool as well. So was the music. Uh, I don't know. It seemed like a really cool time period, even though there were some shitty moments. I mean, yeah, it really seemed like a cool, cool time period. Uh, you gotta have those. But it was originally supposed to be live action, but since it's now going into an animation process, I figured might as well make it a combination of stop motion animation and Japanese anime when that that time comes around. Oh, that's interesting. What yeah. changed it from live action to a- animation? Uh, so funny enough, I'm not big on anime. I mean, there are some animes that I do enjoy watching, like the the '90s Pokemon. Yes. Uh, the Star Wars Visions on Disney Plus. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of another anime that I watched. Oh, I mean, Pokemon's all I could think of. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know older ones, but you probably don't know them. Yeah. Yeah, I mainly '90s anime is what I enjoy the most, yes. especially the, the books, like the mm-hmm. anime books from the '90s, and that's what kind of threw me to like, yeah, it should be a Japanese anime with stop motion animation. Interesting. So it'd be like the backgrounds and the vehicles and the robots would be stop motion, and the humans would be two D two D anime. So I guess in one way to describe it, imagine Titan AE and so like movies like Titan AE and Osmosis Jones and Treasure Planet where it's a combination of 3D animation and 2D animation. Like imagine that, but there was no 3D animation, it'd be stop motion animation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But that's a that's a project that will that will get done after uh, Orlando Monsters finish and Another project that I'll be working on after Orlando Monster is finished with uh, Kevin McNally from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I'll tell you about that after the interview. Okay, so okay. we are we are coming down to the end of the interview. Mm-hmm. And what was your favorite retro product growing up? Let me think about this. Okay. What counts as retro? Uh. 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Can I say Bob Ross? <laughs> yeah, Bob Ross counts. Bob Ross is retro. Yeah. yeah I'm trying to, trying to think if there's something. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of Bob Ross, uh, mm. I have a whole Bob Ross collection behind me. Well, it's oh, not big, but it's like yeah. small. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a shrine to Bob Ross. <laughs> Baby Bob Ross. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not a shrine. Well, it can be. It's valid to have a shrine oh, to Bob Ross. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> Say that one more time. It's kind of creepy. I, well, <laughs> if you're a fan of something and they're already dead. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> but yeah bob ross is an awesome painter oh yeah oh yeah yeah my my uncle joked about if he was going to dress as bob ross he would go in a very different style of bob ross except he would wear he'd wear the afro of course because you can't be bob ross without the afro uh Thank he'd you. wear a chewbacca mask and he would also have one of the corks from star wars the last jedi in his uh pouch in his apron pouch Because he just wants to mix Bob Ross with Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did a short film of that a while back where it was Chewbacca being Bob Ross and he was painting a canvas. And and while he's speaking, he's basically referencing Star Wars. It was yes. a short film that I did when I was a junior in high school. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll forward it to you. Yeah, please do. Please do. Yeah. Too. So cool. <laughs> Is it well, Zylan, thank you again for taking your time to come on today's episode. And it was great to great to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Thanks for having me on.